Hi, my name is Dr. Ellen Evans, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the Pacifier Activated Lullaby, or PAL for short. And specifically, I want to talk to you today about the why. Why the PAL works and why use the PAL. So in order to understand why the PAL works, we have to learn a little bit more about non-nutritive sucking and about music and why we might be using both of those things together in the pacifier activated lullaby. So when we're looking at non-nutritive sucking, the first thing to know is that all babies develop a non-nutritive suck. It's something that we see really start to develop and then really start to use around 32 weeks gestational age. And then this non-nutritive suck, trans they start transitioning it to a work on a nutritive suck around 34 weeks when they're starting to have more coordination in that suck and when they're starting to develop the suck swallow breathe pattern. This continues to mature until around 36 weeks um, gestational age. So it's something that they're working on from 32 to 36 weeks. What's also important to note is that infants that are categorized as preterm are all infants that are born less than 37 weeks gestational age. So that means that most of the babies we're working with in the NICU are working on developing that non-nutritive suck as well as transitioning that non-nutritive suck to a nutritive suck so that they can nurse and take a bottle. The other thing that's really great is that a non-nutritive suck is the first self-soothing mechanism that we have. And it's one that kind of sticks around. You might see babies even still using that non-nutritive suck to soothe when they're crying by maybe sucking on a thumb or taking a pacifier still. So again, it's that first self-soothing mechanism that we do have. The other thing we need to talk about is music and using music. One thing that we know is that all babies are born thinking music is pleasurable. We kind of come hardwired to like music. And so that makes it a really strong reinforcer, meaning that we are likely to do things in order to get music. And that when we get music, we feel really rewarded for getting, for doing what we did to get that music. In studies, when they compared music as a reinforcer to other things, a toy or a gift or even food or something like that, music consistently wins as being the stronger reinforcer. And so that's something that we should know and that we should be able to use. The other thing is that babies start to hear, we see signs that they are hearing something around 25 weeks um, gestational age. And so they're not hearing what you and I are hearing today, but they are starting to hear. Now, this hearing development takes place over a long period of time, and it even goes into early childhood in that infancy stage. They're continuing to develop it, but we do start to see them start to show signs of hearing something around 25 weeks. Again, meaning all these babies in the NICU are starting to hear things, and that auditory system is developing during that time there in the NICU, just like that non-nutritive suck. What we found out through research is that babies will use their suck. It's one thing that they can use purposefully that they can change. And it's one thing that they can do behaviorally to show us preferences. So one of the really cool things that they studied is whether or not a baby would prefer their mother's voice to other female voices. And you know what? They do. Babies actually will show us through their suck and changing their sucking pattern that they would like to hear their mom versus another female voice. So we know that babies can use this suck and they can change the sucking pattern to get something that they want. So Dr. Stanley had the brilliant idea of taking these concepts, this non nutritive suck that all babies are working on and developing and this music that they're coming hardwired to like, that's a powerful reinforcer and combining it into something that would help achieve a clinical goal. The clinical goal being to help them have a more coordinated non-nutritive suck, one that would hopefully then transition them to help to having a better nutritive suck as well. So she uses a simple principle of operant conditioning meaning when the baby sucks and gives us a good non-nutritive suck on their pacifier, then the music turns on and that music reinforces that suck, meaning they get rewarded for giving that suck. But 
then the music goes off. And so the baby then needs to suck again to get that music again. Then we can change the kind of suck we're asking the baby do to be one that is more coordinated or one that looks more like what they're going to be needing eventually when they do want to try to nurse or take a bottle. And as we gradually make them do a little bit better suck and a little bit better suck, they continue to be reinforced for that new suck that they're giving. So we continue to reinforce them and reward them along the way for giving us that suck. So it's a really simple principle that comes from a lot of understanding of development. And so this device follows perfectly with the infant's development. And that's partly why it works. It works because it follows the infant's development. And it works because it's using two things, non-nutritive sucking and music, and combining them through operant conditioning to help the infant develop and coordinate this non-nutritive suck. I keep saying non-nutritive and non-nutritive means that we really are working just with the pacifier. So the pacifier activated lullaby is just using the pacifier. We don't hook it up to a bottle or anything like that. So the baby's not receiving nutrition through the pacifier while they're using the pal, but we are looking at the kind of suck that they're doing. And the suck is being read by the sensor that was developed for the pal. This is it. This is what the pacifier snaps onto. And when it snaps onto that, that sensor is what's doing kind of the magic behind the pal of looking at the type of suck that the baby is doing. So again, why it works. Why it works is because it's using um, science and developmental principles of harnessing the non-intuitive suck with the great rewarding power of music through operant conditioning. So why should we use it? Again, it follows beautifully with the infant's development and what they're working towards. And so it is definitely grounded in developmental principles, but it's also a very non easy non-pharmacological intervention that can be done. So what I mean there is we've not seen in all of our research any instances of harm. And again, we always want to make sure we're not going to be doing anything that might harm the infant. And as of yet, we've not found anything that would give us pause that using this intervention could do any harm to the infant. Quite the opposite. We found time and time and time again, that the infant um, shows better improvements and, and quicker and easier transitions to nutritive, suck, to nutritive sucking and to taking their bottle into nursing when they use the PAL. We've seen this through, again, time to taking a bottle, time to having a feeding tube removed that they might be using until they can take that bottle or they can successfully nurse all of their food. So we've looked at that. So time to taking that feeding tube out and the baby being able to just eat on their own as well as length of time that they're in the hospital. So how long um, are they staying in that NICU and can they go home a little bit sooner? Because we know home is best for all of these babies. So those are some of the ways that we found that we are not doing harm, that we're help actually helping these infants. The other thing is that we found is that when they go home, they're staying home. They're not coming back for readmissions, but they're also not going back for any um, issues with feeding to the, to the doctors or to the hospital as well. So we're not, we're seeing very low risks um, when, when they are going home early with them, with them having feeding difficulties once they get home. The other thing that's really great about it is that it can also be family centered. So it can also include family centered care. Again, we follow the infant's cues in this. We watch the infant and we reward the infant for what the infant can do. And we're never going to push the infant too far. And the infant's going to let us know, this is where I'm at. And we're going to reward them for what they're able to do. But the other really cool thing about it is that we can actually add parents' voices to the PAL. So if you look at it, there's these cool ports over here as well as on the back that allows for us to record parents' voices. So we can record mom or dad um, or any other family member singing to the baby, and we can use that. The uh, Bahal does come with pre-recorded music, uh, but again, that is an option that we have to make it include family and have it be family-centered care as well as to include families in this. 
One really rewarding thing that I find is actually having parents be able to see how their baby reacts to hearing their sound on the PAL and watching their baby vigorously suck to try to get that music back on so that they can hear mom or dad singing to them. So it's a really great way to show parents how important they are in this whole piece when they oftentimes sometimes feel separated from their baby or what are they, they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. This is a way to give them a great way to see how important they are to this infant. So again, it works. Why it works? Again, it's using those simple principles and why should we use it? It's using those simple principles and which showing that it's so beneficial to so many infants through helping them transition to oral feeding, through developing that non-nutritive suck that's giving them a way to help with their self-soothing, but it's also helping to shorten their length of stay. And we can involve family in the process too and help to um, encourage mom and dad in the part that they're playing and growing and developing this infant, even in the NICU. So I hope this gave you a little bit more insight into the wonderful invention of the pacifier activated lullaby. <laughs>